All right, welcome to uh, part three of chapter 11. Um, we're going to take a closer look at uh, title search and title examination, kind of figure out what this grantee grantor index is all about. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a, a crash course. Uh, we're going to spend some more time together in class, but I thought I'd give you a kind of a heads up so that way it's not uh, you're not seeing it for the first time uh, when we get together on Monday. So I'm going to go to this uh, place called Netter Online. It's this very awesome resource, and I'll tell you about it when we get together. But uh, you can scroll over, and you got every state in the country. And you just click on it, and it gives you all the counties. Texas has 254. And uh, so you can just pick one of those counties. And uh, here you'll see county clerk, and then parentheses recorder. You just click on that, uh, go to their website. And we're going to search now. Log in as guest. Accept their disclaimer. And now we are ready to search public records. So this is one of the ways I was telling you about that you could uh, do a title search, right? I could go down uh, to the Montgomery County uh, Recorder's Office and go to their uh, computer system and, and search and look at the documents um, and get copies when I'm, I'm right there. Uh, but, you know, Montgomery County isn't, you know, necessarily right around the corner from me, so it's kind of out of the way. But I can just sit down at my computer. Um, and I can do the search right there. So every uh, county is going to be set up a little bit different, uh, especially their online systems. And every county is going to have, you know, it's going to function a little bit different. And once you get familiar with one, you can kind of use it to, to build and, and go to search in other counties. Um, so they're not all the same. So what you're seeing now isn't going to be necessarily what you see in Harris County or some other counties in Texas or counties in other states. But once you get familiar with the concept, you should be able to use them all pretty fluidly. So I happen to know that uh, Adrian Peterson lives in Montgomery County, Texas. And in case you don't know who Adrian Peterson is, uh, running back for the Minnesota Vikings at least right now who knows where he'll be in a few weeks but uh, many many years running back for the Minnesota Vikings so I typed in his name and hit search so I put his name into the the index right that's where you the, the search field for the index but this is really what the the index is is all about because the index is where you get all of the information uh, so you search through the index and then you get all this information so I searched Adrian Peterson's name so every document with Adrian Peterson in it uh, that's filed for record in Montgomery County uh, should have pulled up uh, in with whatever they have available online so you can see we have six, uh, six documents here. So again, this, this information that you're looking at is going to be basically the same for every county. Some may have a little bit more information. Some may have a little bit less. But it's essentially the same thing. And you'll have, uh, for sure, grantee, grantor. So we searched Adrian Peterson, and you see here it says search name. We typed in Adrian Peterson, and so every document right here, they all have Adrian Peterson in them. Then they give you the uh, person or entity on the other side of the transaction, right? Because remember, we're talking grantee, grantor, someone's giving and someone's taking. Well, so you have to have two sides, a giver and a taker. So that's what this column right here, the searched name and other name, those are the those are the parties to a document. So over here, this says file number. 
this column is known as the instrument number or clerk's file number or recorder's number. It's, they, they all mean the same thing. The, the, those terms are all interchangeable. Um, essentially, you're looking for the numeric identification of a particular document because no two documents are going to be uh, filed with the same number. All right, so the newer documents, since we hit the electronic age, most of the time you're going to see them and they're going to have this four digit year. So, right, 2013 up here, and then 116483. There's only going to be one of those documents. And then this next document was filed chronologically 2013 116 484. So, that was the very next document that was filed. So they're chronological and you just keep going that way and the first four digits are always the year. So that's the way things are, are uh, recorded nowadays. Uh, in the older days, before electronic recording, you had these things called books, deed books. And in part two, I, sh I showed you the picture with all those old books and you'd have a volume and a page. And so here you'll see this 59-883. That is a volume and a page. And if you look right next to it in this column, it says book page 590883. So you'd go to book 59, turn to page 883, and you would find this document right here. So again, the file number is. Uh, sort of like the social security number for a document, right? Just like your social security number is unique to you, uh, the document number is unique to that document. So again, you have a file number or you might have a book and page number if it's older document. Then you're going to have the date that it was recorded. So this is going to tell you the date that it was filed with the county clerk document type it's going to tell you what it is like warranty deed with a vendor's lien this is a deed of trust like we learned about last week and this one says image code this is another way of uh, tracking the documents through in, in the county you normally don't use this to search but sometimes you know it may come down to that you know you may use this as like a secondary um, way to find a document if you're having some trouble searching you might end up having to try to rely on an image code but it's different than the file number and then over here uh, you got the the legal description right we've talked about that a lot legal description so here you have lot block and the subdivision and then they have a place for comments so you can kind of see uh, like when we looked at the deeds uh, for a couple of properties. Remember we had the lot block and section. So this is lot 14 through 17 block 2 village Grogan Mill Woodlands section 61 I think that is. Uh, so that's what the index is. It's just all this information uh, based on the search. Um, and so the way you would do a title search is you type in someone's name, right? And so I searched Adrian Peterson because I know Adrian Peterson uh, owns property in, in Montgomery County, Texas. And although I can't be 100% positive, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is the Adrian Peterson of the Minnesota Vikings. Because uh, when I click on his deed of trust, that's the cool thing about these online records right I can click that and I can pull up the document over here and so if I zoom in I can scroll all the way down to um, signature page 
where Mr. Peterson signed the document. So notice Adrian Peterson, he signed it. And yeah, zoom out just a little bit. But you'll see here where the notary is. Uh, the notary public is in the state of Minnesota. They've crossed out Texas and put Minnesota. So I'm willing to bet that this is, in fact, the same Adrian Peterson uh, from the Minnesota Vikings because I know he lives in Montgomery because he beat up on his little baby and everyone freaked out uh, in the Montgomery County Courthouse. So that's, uh, you know, something cool. You can click on the documents and look at the pages. So the way we do a title search is, okay, so I know Adrian Peterson owns the property now, and I can see his deed, right? Because here's a warranty deed with vendor's lien, and there's Adrian Peterson, and look right there how it says GTE, right, for grant T, which means he received the property. And then over here is GTR for grantor, which gave the property to Adrian Peterson. So that's how I know Adrian Peterson is now the current owner of this. These other ones um, down here, four or three, four, five, and six, are not the same Adrian Peterson. Only these top two are my Adrian Peterson. Actually, this one is uh, is as well, this one down here, this other deed of trust, because it has the same legal description as these other two up here. So, okay. Uh, so what if we want to track Adrian Peterson's property back and do a title search to make sure that, because we, we're going to buy the house from Adrian Peterson. And we want to make sure that Adrian Peterson has good title. So we're going to do a title search. So we search his name, see that he's the current owner and has not sold the property. Because if he sold the property, he would be the grantor on a deed. But since he's only there as grantee, we know he has current ownership. But we want to track the ownership backwards. So what would we do? Well, we find out who he bought it from. And in this case, it's 40 Degrees LLC. So we just copy their name. And then we go back to the search. And we're going to put in 40 Degrees. So everything with 40 Degrees comes up. And here we see our description, lots 14 through 17, Grogan's Mill. We see right here is the deed from 40 Degrees is grantor to Adrian Peterson. And here's the deed to uh, 40 Degrees where they're the grantee. Although it looks like they're in here twice. Maybe they messed up and had to file a, a new deed. But either way, their grantor is Joyce uh, Schweikert. So we take her name and we put it in and search it. And then everything with Joyce's name is going to come up, right? So then we find it. Okay, here it is, Lot 15, Village Grogan's Mill, where she's the grantee. And then we find her grantor, Frank Powell. And then we would search him. And all the while, you're looking at the rest of these documents, making sure there aren't any liens, making sure there aren't any other uh, sales of the property, selling smaller portions of the property off. So you're, you're tracking, going backwards in time, making sure that Everything is good every step of the way, making sure there are no, no other encumbrances, no other claims, no adverse interest, interest in the property. And so you just keep on doing this, and you keep on going back, back and back and back 
until eventually, you know, you end up with the state of, to the state of Texas, right? If you're if you're doing a search in in, in Texas, you you eventually everything ends up back to the state of Texas. So that's how you do a title search: is you just start with the current person and work your way backwards, forming the chain of title, searching every link along the way, going back through time, making sure that the title is good, that there hasn't been any adverse interest or adverse claims, liens, uh, judgments, easements, anything like that that could adversely affect you having the ownership that you think you should have. All right, so um, like I said, that's just Montgomery County. Uh, each county is going to look a little bit different. Each county's website is going to be a little bit different. Each state is going to be a little bit different. So you just never know what you're going to get in any particular county. But most of the time, there there are online resources available, um, and sometimes you'll you'll have to actually go to the county if you wanted to search the records because not not everything is available online yet. Not yet, but it will be. So uh, that's sort of the crash course. We're going to spend more time together um, in class going over, you know, these websites that I've shown you and doing a title search and what it's all about. But uh, now you have it on video in case you wanted to uh, give yourself a, a little re refresher. So um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in class.